How's it going guys? Welcome to part 5 of this San Marino experiment. We are 20 years into the game and the year is 2039. Let's get straight into it and check out this senior side of San Marino. And I will say right now, if there is no improvement from last time, I will be very, very shocked. And they've... Uh, I think they may have, I can't remember if it was 136th or 134th they were last time. Um, but, who knows, who knows. And Marco Raggini in five years has gone from potentially a, a decent player to, damn, <laughs> 140 now and he's 40 caps for the national side, 21 years old, and he's played eight games for zebra which if you have any knowledge at all means that that's, that's juventus so he is now a juventus goalkeeper um when did they moved a few times oh he played 47 games for kalungo and then juventus bought him and yeah, he's gone from strength to strength, and that is pretty impressive. I think, I mean, being a goalkeeper, he's definitely held the, the side in there, you know, excuse the pun. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, there's nothing else. There's just, there's one player with 102. Uh, apart from Regini in goal, the side, national side is actually worse than a... Uh, than, than the start of the game somehow <laughs> well let's have a look at the shortlist and see if there are any other players uh, we have a promising one here Mattia Dolcini and he is 16 years old is a centre midfield and once again plays for Juvenez Dogana uh, he's already had one cap for the under 21 international side and he's got good potential to become a decent player and Maurizio Bugli. He is 17 years old and has a potential of 103. Wouldn't amount to anything substantial, but you know, half decent, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't see how the national side have got. Let me check the uh, see if this has changed. No, it's, it's still a 200. Um, well, let's, let's, get, let's get into the schedule. Maybe things are looking better there. We go back to 34. And, yep, they beat Gibraltar 2 0 both times. Uh, lost the rest of the games. And managed to. I'm guessing Gibraltar got relegated out of that league. And the year after, beat Malta. Draws against Faroe Islands and Poland. Um, two draws against Faroe Islands and one against Poland. The rest end in defeat. 2036 and a couple of friendly wins. Uh, win against Moldova in the. I think they're going to have to. Uh, they're going to be needing the playoffs again. I think they're going to get caught out eventually. And yes, they did. They eventually. They finally have been relegated after all this time. It's Faroe Islands in a 2-1 aggregate loss. And they went the rest of the year without a single draw or win. Things are not looking good. I did not expect it. Oh. And they went the year unbeaten. The following year, 2038. A couple of wins in the friendlies against Armenia and Luxembourg. Um, beat Lithuania, Malta, Andorra, Druid Lithuania. Andorra and Moldova. It seems they're far too good for this level, but not quite good enough for the league above. And in the Euro Championships in the current year of 2039, they lost to Poland, uh, beat Malta, drew with Georgia, and narrowly lost out to Turkey. So things are still kind of up and down. There's slight potential there, but you know, nothing of, you know. I can't see where they're going to get anything substantial from. Let's check out Juvenez Dagana. 
and we'll go through their schedule. We'll go back to 34-35 season. And Dundalk, they lost two, and then they managed to get through on a 2-1 aggregate win against that team. Budden cost, I think. And then they lost to Bran in the third qualifying round of the Euro Cup 2. 35-36 uh, season, they lost to Maribor 5-0 on aggregate. Uh, got through against Sajeska. Uh, one nil on aggregate. Then they came back from two one down to win three one and five two on aggregate against Zaria Balti, and then lost out to Astana in the fourth qualifying round. So they still still haven't made it through to a to the group stages. Uh, lost against Hammerby uh, in the Champions Cup. Lost 4-0 on aggregate, and then were knocked out against Spartax. Very close, but they uh, ultimately a 3-2 loss in 36-37 season. And year after, they won 3-0 in the Champions Cup first preliminary qualifying round. Uh, lost to Dynamo Kiev 4-0, tough game there, and then lost to Red Star. Um, six nil. Oh, they, they 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 carried on. They got into the Euro Cup two. Uh, they won that uh, four one on aggregate, and they got through to the Euro Cup group. Look at this. Let's have a look at this. Uh, they lost two one in their first game, two one in their second game, three nil in their third game, one nil in the fourth game. So I think by the looks of it, they went. Yeah, they didn't win a single game in the group, but they actually made it to the group stages, which is fairly impressive. And I mean, going by their league form, from December all the way to the end of the season, they only lost one game, and that was a final against Fiorentino. So things are picking up for the club sides. And Champions Cup, they won the first two games against that team and St. Julia, both 2-0 wins. Uh, they drew with HJK uh, in the Champions Cup first qualifying round, beat Cliftonville uh, 3-1 on aggregate in the Euro Cup 2, then they beat Paid LM, fairly convincing win, 5-2, and in the fourth qualifying round, by the looks of it, they were knocked out by Zelina. Uh, Still, they're improving, and we are up to the current season, and they are yet to play their games. But yeah, I mean, for the national side, things are looking pretty average. Still not as bad as they were at the beginning of the game, but still fairly average. Um, no real youth players coming through, but Juvenez and Ghana are looking pretty solid when it comes to the league and are improving when it comes to European football. Well, I guess we'll have to skip forward another five years. Until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.